Okay, so I'm calling the meeting to order, and I see that there are people from the public here, so we'll have a public session first, and I just want to remind you that they can speak and we're not to reply to them speaking. Perception public? Yes. Yeah. Public. Well, I'm going to speak first. But I want to compliment the um, bistro. It used to be like $8 or something before, and now you get $3, so you get a good substantial lunch. Secondly, I've heard people complain about the bingo machine. They say that they can't get the numbers fed, but the machine's broken. Maybe they can fix it. The third issue, and the last, is it's nice that they extended the hours. But, uh, you know, I want to just say alcoholism and suicide are a very high rate that's serious amongst elderly sen seniors. They need a place to go at night a lot of times, and two hours is a good start to work from five to seven twice a week. I think it would be a good effort to try to keep it open later. I don't know how much later, maybe till nine regularly. It might get a course the security guard, but they could charge for bingo, a nominal 50 cents or something, but I don't know. Anyway, that's it. The last issue that I had uh, was that. Also, I know Northampton has always strived for multiculturalism, multi-ethnic multiculturalism, and that's important, and, and Northampton <laughs> is one of the best on that issue, but here, I hardly ever see a person of color come in a, a, as a senior to, you know, whatever. Okay, thank you. I, I forgot to ask you, sir, could you state, state your name for us? My name is Stanley Marin. Okay. I used to live at the Lathrop, which was in Northampton, but we moved to Greenleaves, which is in Amherst, so you can maybe discount everything I said. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next, sir, did you want to speak? I have nothing to say. Okay. That's a new one. <laughs> <laughs> So next is staff reports for uh, Jennifer Goddard. Yes, hi there. Good to see everybody. Thanks for dodging raindrops to get out here. It's kind of nice to hear the rain though. Hopefully it cools things down. Um, so I'm just giving you a brief rundown on what we've been doing transportation-wise. Just throw some numbers out at you. We've been in operation with our van service now just about a year and a half. It continues to grow. The demand is there. Um, we don't know if the funding is always going to be there, so we want to throw some numbers at your value and, and hope that you can see that this is an important um, asset to our seniors. Um, with our van service, we provided, within just this last year, 4,827 trips. That's our van service. That's between the two vans. And we had 286 seniors participating on that on a regular basis. Our medical transportation program has decreased some due to the fact that the van service is in operation and we are actually doing quite a few medical appointments with the van. Um, we did 420 rides last year with 95 participants taking part in that. Um, we are looking at a few different options for freeing up the van for other things besides medical transportation by offering, looking into a carpooling system um, to, to take some of those trips. So we can free the van up for more things like hairdresser appointments, which are, I think, just as important as a, a medical appointment. I mean, that makes you feel good, you know, have your hair done. And, and so we would like to be able to offer more of those types of trips as they come up. <coughs> we do get a lot of those calls, and I have had to turn some people away. Um, we're asking for 48 hours notice for those types of appointments right now, but, um, Really, we could be doing a lot more there. Um, with the van service, our van has provided 1,124 trips here to the senior center in the last year, with 76 people taking advantage of that and participating in that. Um, we are doing shopping trips, weekly shopping trips to Big Y, Stop and Shop, River Valley Market. The numbers for Big Y, 377 trips last year or within this year and stop and shop 585 trips um, we are taking people to farmers markets multiple farmers markets the tuesday market the farmers market in florence on wednesday 
um, we're taking people to the survival center. The X-98 was cut and there's just a shuttle that runs now from the Academy of Music to the survival center and it's on a pretty limited basis. It only runs a few times a day. Um, so we're seeing more need for ridership to even get to, to services like that. Um, and we're seeing an increase in more people wanting that kind of thing. are opening the van service to having monthly trips. We took our first trip yesterday. We went to Barstow's Longview Farm in Hadley and it was it was well attended. We had um, our, our chair there, Jerry Ann, was in attendance with us and we had eight, eight to 10 people, I think, at one point when we had people join us. Um, so that was well received. It was just a day of having some lunch out they painted pumpkins and they they really loved it. And there were there were just children there too. I think you know the painting may have been geared more towards children, but honestly, our seniors had such a great time just even watching the kids. You know, some of them may not have grandchildren around, and just you know that intergenerational piece of it just felt good. You know, and I think that I heard we made it to the news last night. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So we're it. It. yeah sort of. <laughs> So, and we're looking at planning our next trip for next uh, for November to go to the Chrysanthemum Show at Smith College with lunch at Smith Vocational. Oh, nice. Yeah. So we're looking at doing more of those kinds of things, being able to open that up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what's that? Oh yes, and we are working on a survey as well to just really find out what the needs are within the community in terms of you know places we're not going to currently, or you know just what they what the people would like to see. And so, excuse me, who are you, who's going to be surveying? The people who use the van already, or the all the above? Everyone. Everyone. Yeah. So we'll find out you know what types what they would like us to be doing differently with the service but for people that already are riding and then we'll be able to reach some folks that may not even realize they still get a lot of phone calls from people I didn't realize you did this you know type of service we have done some advertising in the Chronicle we have brochures out in doctor's offices and around the community we have them on the van so we can pass them out so people can pass them to a friend um, but still a lot of people that don't realize we, we do this I thought the nice thing was some people met us there. Not everybody took the van. Yeah. People actually met us because they knew that it was a day that, and it was a gorgeous day. So oh, yeah. it, it, every, every, I had a great time. Everybody had a good time. Yeah, <laughs> so it was really nice. So looking forward to doing more things like that. So, yeah, and I think that's about all for me. Hey, okay, thanks, Jack. Thanks, Jack. Now, Michelle, gentlemen, oh. social worker. Okay, hi, everyone. <laughs> Um, I'm just going to talk about some up-and-coming things. Um, the first one is um, we're going to have a, I'm going to pass this around, Better, Better Breeders Monthly Support Group. It's going to start November 16th. And it's, I'm going to pass one this way. Oh, so Better Breeders Support Group, Monthly Support Group. It's a collaboration between um, the Senior Center and CARE One. Um, they, they are gotten money from um, the um, American Lung Association. Mm -hmm. So um, the posters are up. It will be in the Chronicle. And so we're happy for that. I think it will be uh, a good support group. And we'll be doing that one, two, two, once a month. I think it says one or two. <laughs> so, yes. Uh, I like what Jennifer said about the transportation fire <coughs> fee position offices and I think it would be awesome to have those flyers yes. there yep. as well. Yeah we're uh, you may have already been yeah, we're, planning on that. Yeah we, yeah. yeah we are and um their yeah. care one is also going to be advertising. We oh, I always right. ask or we yeah. always ask for whatever mm -hmm. the group is that we're collaborating right. with to also market the program in their yeah. in their newsletter at their their place and I'm showing that advertising. But yes, and it helps. Figure out which one of you are maybe both, you know, are going to be dropping off flyers at the doctor's office or mail. That's a great idea. Thank yeah, or whatever. Yeah. Or I can drop some off yeah. if you want. And, and it, it should be on the American Lung Association's website also. Oh. So, so we'll get the word out, definitely. Yeah. Um, so that's one great thing about collaborating. Yeah. Is, um, you get all the 
all the angles, all the marketing, so that's nice. Um, and I'm going to pass around um, the next thing is the, I'm working on a Rainbow Supper Club. Um, I'm going to just pass some this way. There's Spanish and one side, oh I post more, one more this way. Um, this is the one I went to in Holyoke. I visited last, last um, week, I think it was last week, with a, um, one of the um, gay men's drop-in group members. Um, so we went to the supper, it was lots of fun. Um, they had lots of energy there. It was a great turnout. And they want to have one here. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> so the rainbow, uh, it's a, some people have it at lunch, some people have it separate. So it's, it, the club offers LGBTIQA seniors 16 and older, usually a nutritious meal and an opportunity to socialize with friends and enjoy various activities. Um, including programs, entertainment, and educational series. It's what each um, each place, like the COA in Holyoke, they um, like had karaoke the night I went. But the next month they're going to have bring cards or have, have card games. It's a social event. Their um, program is um, in their COA in their senior center like it would be here, but it's also collaboration through their Western Mass Elder. Is it Western Mass? Yeah, yep, yeah, Western Mass Elder Care. Um, we would also like to be doing a, a dinner or a lunch. We're gonna try to do it on different days or different time mm -hmm. that the other ones do because um, there's a day club that just opened in um, East, um, Deerfield, sorry, in Deerfield and then there's a few other ones around so we're going to collaborate with them and make sure that we're not um you know on the same day or the same night because a lot of those people go there were, when i went there were seniors that come here were at that at that supper so it's a two-hour day do there from five to seven um so it was well well attended and people from all different towns came to there so they seemed to go to the, all the different ones and um, we're, I'm have, we're gathering a committee, a, a committee to look at planning committee. So I have, um, we're thinking like five, six members. So there's a few members there we're gonna be meeting in the next few weeks. So they can, um, you know, start planning it here. And we'll be meeting with Kevin um, about doing some sort of nutritional, it doesn't have to be a meal, it's whatever the group decides that is gonna best suit them because it is for, for the community, so. But yeah, um, they charge this for their meal, which was like $2.50. So those are things that we'll still be figuring out on um, the committee. So my, my um, hope is that we can start in January, at, you know, at the earliest, but we'll see once we meet and you know, get the point in going. Yes. Okay, so, um, <laughs> Um, we are doing, um, oh, we're going to be planning a um, senior center welcoming packet, so we're getting that together. Um, so whenever, when someone signs up, we can give them all the information about the building <coughs> and the programming and make sure they have everything, you know, maybe some programs that we, not just programs, but some assistance that we provide, um, community assistance like food stamps or any of those programs that they might qualify for letting them know really what we, we offer here. And they, they can look at that. So um, we're, we're, I just took over, um, I wanted to talk about the Deals and Skills. We have collaboration through um, Deals and Skills Store and us. And they um, provide once a month, we have 60 members. They bring a bag of different items, some food, some non-food, sometimes it's shampoo, sometimes it's hand soap. And we have 60 members in that. Um, and we, I'm streamlining that a little. Um, we just got it up and running. A, I'm running it a little differently. So um, we're looking into adding more people. We can add as many people as we need at this point. So. Is there a criteria for participation in that? There is. There, you have to be a senior. There's an application at the front desk. And the application doesn't necessarily go by your income, it goes by what you would have after everything is paid. Mm -hmm. And that's been the standing when it first started. 
Uh, so um, right now we're just keeping it all pretty much the same. Other yeah. people, I imagine it's in the chronicle. Yes, yes, it will be in the chronicle. May I just ask, I remember at one of our last policy meetings when we were talking about the, this, that awesome idea of the orientation packet, I think we were, is, are we still going to put the code of conduct that we worked on? It was the subcommittee yeah, that worked on. Yeah, once everything's that approved. That would go in it as well? Yeah, anything yeah. That's, that's been worked on, like in the committee, for the code of conduct, yeah. it has to go and be voted on and moved mm -hmm. here. So once all that is... Then that would go in it. Yeah. Add that to oh, I thought we had done it, but I'm glad to no, know. No, no, it, it's, it's still done, but I'm not sure yeah. I wasn't in that report. Yeah. We're, we're, we're in the process. We're going to vote on it today. I guess the board's going to vote on it today. Yeah. Oh, nice. Cool. To them. How timely. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, I've also been working on the information we have up at the front desk. Um, and it's open enrollment for Shine, serving health information needs of everyone. And that's for Medicare open enrollment. So anyone that has Medicare A and B and they have a plan they want to they want to switch or look at another plan, they're able to do that between October 15th and December 7th. And it's a lot to ask the front desk to, you know, they, they're making appointments, it's great, but I streamlined a little questionnaire for them for when somebody calls in. Um, they can ask them, do they have Medicare? And then there's a yes and no slot to see. It. Uh, to help them help the person quicker. So they're not coming in for an appointment they don't really need, and um, they can be referred to someone else like Medicaid or Social Security if they don't have Medicare. Because um, it, it happens where they're, they're coming in, we want them to come in, but we want them to come in for certain things. So that's, that seems to be helping a little bit, so we'll see. It's just set up less than a week. <laughs> I'm doing all sorts of other things, but um, those are the pretty much the up and coming things at the moment. I think of. Yeah. Great. Do you have any questions? Sorry, I talked really fast, but I get <laughs> excited. But yeah, it's um, things are happening. Good, good things are happening. Are there any um, veterans or former uh, service member groups? We, um, we, we, well, there are some, um, there's, they did the dinner across the street, the lunch. Yeah, how much? Yeah, we do have a lot of veterans that come in here and they go to the dinner. As a support group, I, I don't know offhand. I can definitely look that up. Um, usually what I do is refer people to Steve Connor mm -hmm. at the veterans office. Mm -hmm. And, um, but we do, we have the men's group. There's another women's group that might be coming up. So things are, you know, happening um, so we're out there kind of being researched and getting people to come out of the more communities but not quite in there still up here in the area <laughs> another piece that's coming on that michelle and i work on together are the fuel fuel assistance oh, yes. going to be happening. yes fuel assistance so i i just went to a meeting i'm a volunteer at highland valley as well and we're, we're hoping to set up a time where people can just ask us about fuel assistance. Right now we've been doing it that people make an appointment and we send them the information they need to bring. Mm -hmm. But we're hoping to get more people that aren't, don't okay. know. Yeah. Yeah. So we're hoping to set up like a certain time that people could just come and ask the volunteers, mm -hmm. I, I'll be one of them, about fuel assistance or SNAP for that matter. And then we can we can set up an appointment later where they bring all their paperwork and we actually do the application. A lot of people are very hesitant to bring the paperwork and do the application, but if we can maybe screen them and say, it looks like you could really get something, that might bring them bring more in. We're looking to get more and more people to use that pro those two programs. So. Yeah, it has grown a lot, but there are some people that think, oh, it's, you know, I make too much, or, but it's amazing, you know, the income level is a little higher than what people imagine. Yeah. Um, so Highland yeah. Valley, we, between SNAP and fuel assistance, during the last year, we, people got $14,000, the people, you know, up, all together. Right. I'll have to figure that out. All of it together. <laughs> so, but there yeah. were a lot of them were Northampton people. A lot yeah, of them. yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's so we do collaborate with the PCA program mm -hmm. and have a lot too. So, can everybody hear over there with the fan? Yeah, thank oh, you. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> okay. you yeah,
Okay, so did people get a chance to review the minutes of the last meeting and, and has anybody got any changes or corrections to them? I'm sorry, I didn't brought that up and I hadn't Not read that paragraph, so I would have seen that. So if there's no changes, I'd like to entertain a motion to approve the minutes from the September meeting. Make that move. Bob, making the motion. Second someone? Second. Donna? All those in favor? Say aye. aye. Opposed? Okay, so it passes. My, my copy, I mean, I read them online, so I lost yeah. that, but um, my copy is just the same thing on both sides. Um, so I didn't know if anybody else was saying I, 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 I have them on mine. So no, some, some are, some are that way and some are. So. I, in case you were going to just file it, I just wanted to. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It was just mis miscopied. Yeah, yeah. as long as you have one that's good, that's all we <laughs> Okay, on to old business. Okay. People are ready for that. So, Marie? Thank you, too. So the, were people able to review the, the revisions of the bylaws and the code of conduct? Mm -hmm. It was posted online and um, we handed them out at the last meeting. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I just wanted to bring up that um, I think we, we, we might want to go ahead and discuss the code of conduct and, and then um, put it to vote but the the bylaws I just found out um, some information today that made me think we should wait on voting on that because um, the um, the exemption the golden age meals tax exemption came back with a denial because because we serve people under 60 um, you know, that's not something necessarily we want to change, but I think that it, it warrants more discussion. Um, and we were going to have that kind of discussion today anyway. Um, so, um, I don't know if we want to move forward with the code of conduct or start with the discussion about the bylaws. But. Does anybody have any questions about the code of conduct or any, anything that they want to speak about? Yeah. I, I, I don't mind the con the tone of the, of the code is really negative. It's very, very don't, 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 don't. Is there a way to flip it? I mean, I think it's, I don't. I don't have any issues with some of the, the content issues, but it just comes across as a very paternal, maternal kind of. This is these are all the things you can't do here, versus the things that maybe you could do. So if there's a, a way to flip it, I'm happy to work with whoever on it. Um, but just to flip it so it sounds a little more like welcoming, mm -hmm. less punitive. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can you make a suggestion on one of them that you think is, because the thing is that it is the rules, it is a code of non conduct, it, we're not going to explain what they can do so much as what they can't. So that, uh, I, you know, it's, if you can give us an example. I think providing some context and I think maybe grouping them in terms of the things that for, for safety, they're just, it's a hodgepodge of stuff about you can't smoke, you can't have pets, you can't do this. It's sort of, you know, what can I do here? What's the, maybe, maybe it's part of that, I'm not sure what the other, Michelle's gone, the other content pieces in the welcoming kit. How does this fit? And just a little more context so people are feeling more welcome with my, my suggestion. Yeah, I mean, the policy committee looked at, like, I don't know, 15 different versions from different places and sort of put put together, kind of put together some categories. Um, and, um, you know, I agree. I, I think that a code of conduct is does sound punitive and restrictive, um, but it is part of, a, it is intended to be part of a welcoming packet, and I think that Right now, people aren't seeing it unless they violated it, basically. And so, um, but it is kind of a tool that gets pointed to when someone's doing something that we need a rule to point to. Mm -hmm. um, but so, it, so it none does, of the ones that were looked at were anything more friendly? Not really, no. Um, 
to that. Um, we basically took what was existing and right upgraded now. it. So what, what the was one existing, that was in place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so it wasn't, it's never been a positive thing. Yep, that's um, what we're going to do. <laughs> You know, I guess we were looking at it as trying to make sure that negative things weren't happening here. So that's probably mm -hmm. what. This is primarily like. handed out with a packet of other things when people join the senior center. Well, it's it's not really being handed out. Oh. Um, and it should it, it should be. So that's that was part that's of our discussion sure. was that we need to be more welcoming, but we also need to be orienting people to the culture and how we want everyone to get along here and um, and how we manage to make that happen by having some guidelines yeah. that we expect everyone but to follow. But if you handed out with the welcoming packet, you'd have a lot of positives and then this one thing. That right, well that's the intention. This, this thing, it just stands up alone, I agree with her, it is a little negative. If it just stands there alone. And I, I thought the what you just said was beautiful, maybe a, a, a beautiful little introduction to the need for that code of conduct it, and it expressed why do we have these rules and what are, what is the purpose of them. I, I can't rephrase how you just said it, but it's well, that, And great. that's how we, and we would way. address that. We do have an intro at the top of it. I don't remember that. what the, I helped write it, so I don't remember what the intro said, but if it captures what Marie, was just saying that we want it to be a positive and welcoming place for everyone and uh, we're looking at having these guidelines or policies help make that happen, you know, and have it be a safe and welcoming place for everyone. So I think that was the idea behind this because there had been some things going on that um, a couple months ago that felt I remember Marie um, reached out to some of us and said, or the board, and said, this is feeling very negative, and how do we approach this to prevent any further problems? You know, there were some people behaving in such a way that was making other people feel very unwelcome and uh, not, ha you know, didn't, they were on the verge of not wanting to come here anymore, if I understand. Yes. And it, it happens a lot. And yeah. it didn't make Marie feel good either. If you don't mind me saying, I remember she had just heard it, and Marie, you know, and it didn't make her feel very welcome to have people here treating her that way. Too. So all around, I think that um, that was the feeling I got, what kind of made us get down to business and say, let's address this. And I'm not negating what you're saying either, Cynthia. You know, Cynthia is just trying to uh, start educating people that this isn't a willy-nilly place. No, I, I, There's I, a kind of conduct. I'm not you know, my issue has nothing to do with, with why, obviously. Yeah. It's just about tone. I meant just yeah, so in the yeah. tone, maybe we, yeah. if there is, if it's hard if I just say, then I'll shut up. That it, I like how Jerry Ann asked, if there is a way that you might be able to help with that tone, um, like you had offered, I think that might, or even in the, if the introductory paragraph doesn't explain the tone, but I know in life there are some things that you have, we have to say, have to use the negative. I mean, we can't always phrase it. It's like, well, you can smoke anywhere else, but not in this building. I mean, how do you say, how do you phrase a policy? You know what I mean? There yeah, may be I, some that you, if with your input, we could mm -hmm. change the tone a little bit, but I don't know if it would work for all of them necessarily. Okay, I'm Jean, just speaking because I was one of the people who helped. Jean's going to have a good one. I'm ready. I'm done. Yes. I mean, I have them in front of me, so I don't know if everybody is, but I think 2, 3, and 13 could be combined because there's, it's ones that all talk about respect. So you have the one is respecting people who have different, you know, um, ethnic or gender identities or whatever. But then there's talking about just respecting people in general. And then there's talking about respecting people's property, mm -hmm. but all of them are kind of touched on on the first one anyway. So I think you could just kind of like take out, you could probably like streamline the language, but still hit all three. And then it wouldn't sound like there were so many negative things because it would only be one rule. Mm -hmm. um, and the other thing is, I think that you're going to have a problem with proper attire if you wanted to yeah. come up to people and say you don't have proper attire. Um, I think that um, ACLU already handled this in the schools. <laughs> so um, I don't know what you're going to, you know, I think that you can say you have to wear shoes, but I don't think you can say that you have to have proper attire. Um, whatever that is. Shirts and shoes. Right. 
more shape. Shape. Yeah, I mean, Dennis was yeah. saying basically that we want we want it to be general enough that it can be left somewhat to our interpretation. Right, but, if you, but when you do that, that's what happened in the schools and they said, I mean, with t-shirts, you know, like when you said that you can't have certain things written on your t-shirt. So like, you know, I don't think that, I mean, I think that you just, I think people will be embarrassed to discover they're not properly attired if it isn't clear what that is. And what is it anyway? I don't. I, I don't no. think. Yeah. I think what happens is. I mean. I think we need. Obviously, need to go back to the committee and look at this again. But um, and you know, Dennis really helped a lot with this, and this was his job in Greenfield, and so he really made it clear that um, the more specific you get, the more people can say, well, it doesn't say that here. It only says you can't wear shoes. It doesn't say I can't wear pants that are really filthy and smelly. I know. <laughs> Whatever, you know. I don't really know what it means anyway. You know what I mean? Like, I'm, I What's think if you ask every person at this table would probably Well, he said that, it. yeah, that that then, you know, sort of left up to our, to our interpretation and that we need to have an understanding as staff. Um, so I think, um, because there is, you know, there is a lot of, um, there's a lot of challenging of particular language. Um, you know, if you, if you don't, if you spell it out and you leave one thing out, mm -hmm. then people can point to it. So believe me, people aren't, they aren't really reading this and dissecting it. <laughs> I mean, I think it's really, it's really a tool. Right. But I do think that it, it could be friendlier uh, when we talk to people about conduct in the building. We do talk about it in in the context of the reasons why we ask people to behave this way is because it's for the best for everyone if we are flexible and we are, um, you know, accommodating and we don't single people out or we don't exclude people. But I, I have I had a lot of people come to me and say, um, you know, I didn't know that it was in here that people couldn't swear and they'd been really upset that people in their group were, you know, sort of very casual about that and they felt uncomfortable and didn't know what to say. Um, but if there's something to point to that says, you know, in order for this to be an uncomfortable and respectful environment, we ask you to behave in this way. Please don't use profanity. Sure. Please, you know, um, right. I'm just saying it's like, I think you can say you should wear a shirt and shoes and pants, but when you start saying you're dirtier than you are, then you, it's a real, you're on a slippery slope. <laughs> right. Well, we do have, um, we do have some stuff in here about, you know, you have to be continent, you can't, you right. have to be able to supervise yourself. And those are really clear, that's good. Yeah. Which ones did you say, again, could be combined, Gene? 2, 3, and 13, I think. And I, I think we did discuss that, and, he, and, and what we were afraid of was that people wouldn't actually read one that was really, really long. Um, mm -hmm. If we could make it a lot shorter, that would be good. Or you could bullet it. Uh-huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I think that um, says exactly <laughs> what three says, except it says it's a slightly different language. But you can put all of two, three into two, reading it just as it is. And Michael, you had a comment? Yeah, I, I'm not sure it's any different. Thinking about what, Could you speak up for me? I'm sorry. I was thinking about what Cindy said. It did seem to me that in this code of conduct, you could very briefly state our values. What is it we're about? And then the bullet points make clear what follows from those values. Mm -hmm. And it seems to me, and I think you're getting it, but look, we want a welcoming place where everybody feels comfortable. We want a place where the diversity of human experience is celebrated and respected. I'm, I'm making this up. Can you write it? It sounds so good. And then, so, given yeah. those are our values, you yeah. can't cuss at other people. You can't, you know, uh -huh. if we have, as you, I think, put it, a contextualized sort of opening, then the other things make sense and they can be voted. Um, all of this makes sense in some way. We don't want people vaping. Why? How come they can't vape? What's the problem? It's a health issue, isn't it? So we could contextualize that and put all the bullet points about 
you know, we respect people's desire to live a, a healthy... Well, they can vape. They just can't do it within 50 feet of the building. Well, they can't vape in the building or within 50 feet. I'm using that as an example. I, I think it would get really long, though, if we... No, 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 no. Yeah. My point is the other way. that there can be a s small contextual statement about what we value, and then bullet points, which can be brief. So you, okay. you want to expand the uh, the initial paragraph? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, that's yeah. What, okay. It kind of says good. that, but not very specific. So yeah. we're not we're not going to revise it now. I think that people no, no. should come yeah. to the yeah. committee. Yeah, I think that we need your help with the committee because I, I I agree with what you're saying, but I also agree. I mean, I am from, you know, excuse me, but there's no dogs prevent, you know, like that kind of thing. That I need a, I personally am very factual, so Absolutely. I need to show somebody. Look, there's no, you can't bring your bicycle into the building. Absolutely. So, I think um, you can say I, that. that. That's why it's so. I think so what he's talking about more is the, uh, so the organization of it, not the, the principle of it. Yeah, so I, I think we should start the policy committee meeting again. I think we had four meetings on So I think it might take a couple more to, to just kind of revise it again and then we can bring it back. So if we have suggestions for policy committee, should we put them through you, Marie, to the committee? I'm I think, I think that if you... If we have if, suggestions through you to the committee, who is the committee? I don't think I know. Who so it's, it's, it's just made up of people from the board, um, and if you would like to join that conversation, then um, when the, should let me know, and I'll put you out uh, on the list for the invite. Okay, and I'll, but I'll also just I'll submit my suggestions. That's what I'm trying to. I've got some thoughts about rewriting. I'm happy to submit them. I just don't know to who. Right, but I just want you to know that if you're not part of the committee, then your suggestions might get tossed if you're not there to defend them. Like it's it's a gotcha. it's a it's a process. Got it. And it yeah, yeah it would be helpful if you would come to the okay. meeting so we can sure. do we can just get it done. Sure. Okay, great. And we're going to bylaws. Um, so, but the the bylaws, I think it would be worth um, it would be worth reviewing them, and so that when we come back again, um, I'm, I'll hope to have more information at our next meeting um, about. Um, I'm not sure when the senior center designated itself as. Um, an, an agency that serves 55 to 59 year olds, and and, and I, like I said last time, I don't I don't know what um, what that applies to because it says some programming for 55 to 59, but though but nobody seems to know what those programs are, and so it's been sort of a blanket policy that's just kind of bled into every everything is for anyone over 55, like it hasn't been really enforced. It should be in the minutes of because uh, I remember voting on it. But this you was do. quite a few years ago. Okay, because the mayor mayor was also asking, like, when did this happen? And um, because uh, um, you Wait. know the funders do require that we serve people over sixty, mm -hmm. um, and if we put it in our bylaws, then it looks like we serve people fifty five and up. Um, so that's the issue about what it says in the bylaws. It's the the golden age exemption for meals tax says specifically that you must your bylaws must say that you serve people 60 and up. Do um, we have an issue of just changing the bylaws to reflect that? Um, well, I think that it probably we we don't want our bylaws to say something that we are not actually enforcing like we we want to live by our bylaws oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. so if we're going to serve people 55 to 59 that's really the decision like and, and if we're going to do it with just specific programs that's a conversation that needs to happen so that we actually have something that we're following because right now we're we're taking anyone as a member who's over 55. I think that when we voted on that, I think that was our, our purpose, as I remember right. it. We did make an exception that there would be additional fees, possibly, for people for 55 to 59. And in some cases, uh, if 60 and older were filling up a class, 55 may be left out, right. as we do out-of-town people. We yeah. fill out with ours first. That was essentially what we went over, but you'd have to get through the minutes of, of the actual vote in that time. It was quite a few years ago. 
I remember it that way. I think in real time, it's really hard to enforce that. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that's probably why it hasn't been. <laughs> um, because then it's anyone who's RSVPing or say, well, we can put you on the list, but you're, you'll go on the second list or the third list, depending on whether you're this age or this age or this age. Um, so for us, logistically, I think there are concerns. And then also for the way things have been, people are used to, if that was going to change, that would be a, a concern I'm sure a lot of people would have. Um, but our funders do require us to serve people over 60, the community block grant, and the executive office of elder affairs, and Highland Valley. So there are there are many things in place, and then this golden age exemption is you know something we, we maybe we don't we don't want to make changes for that reason to just get that exemption because you know I, I would save some people um, would save us money paying tax because we're actually including that in our our cost for the three dollar meal. Do we do that for the coffee shop already? Yeah, we pay tax. So you pay tax on the coffee shop. Mm -hmm. We know for how many, if any, which is in the Depends on how many want to be sure. Yeah, it's going to be in that. Um, so we need to have one conversation going on at a time because we can't, we can't keep minutes. I, I've lost track of what, what's the question that we're, yeah. what's the problem that we're trying to solve right yeah. now or the question that we're trying yeah. to answer? Well, we were going to vote, there was going to be a vote on amending the bylaws which have been posted, the revisions have been posted for the allotted time. And so I, I think we should postpone that in order to have further discussion about um, whether we should change the age bracket we're serving or whether we should, um, designate specific programs that are for 55 to 59. Um, I think there's a lot change of different graphic, pieces. Six, change the bracket to 60. Yeah, and I, I was, you know, to, okay. calling MCOA today to say, you know, I know that community centers that are senior centers don't have the stipulation, but they probably are enforcing it in terms of their funding. You know, of course they are. So if they have a program that's for only 60 plus, they're not letting the whole community into those programs. But um, I think most senior centers are for 60 and up, but I, I don't know that for sure. So you're going to be sort of, you're having to be I need, first to research. I need to do some research, yeah, but I also, I also think that there needs to be more discussion about yeah. it. And we were going to have discussion, we were talking in the last meeting about um, about this in terms of whether people can bring their friends who weren't 55, whether people can bring their grandchildren. Um, and so we were going to have that discussion anyway. And so I, I'm wondering if people had things they wanted to discuss about that or if you want to wait until we have more information. What's the definition of sewer? You say the requirement is that we state that we serve, does that mean that only those people can be members who are 60 and over, only those people who come in the building? What does that mean? I'm, I'm not clear. Well, so we do have some programs like Brown Bag that are open to people who qualify, and those people are of all ages. So we do some programming that's for low income people. What are we required to say where in our bylaws? Where? It seemed to me you were suggesting that there's a requirement that we state something specific in our bylaws about serving people 60 and up. Is that, am I not? For the golden age. New only tax. for the golden age. That's only for that. Is that right? So does that just include just the bistro and the coffee shop? So it's just on meals tax, the golden okay. age meals tax exemption. But anything so, else? So if, if we passed that, and we served people who weren't seniors in selling food to them. I thought that they would say, well, you just need to charge those people tax. But what they said was, and maybe it's more complicated, maybe we can sell to non-seniors, but our bylaws have to say that we serve 16 up and not other age groups. Uh, the community block grant money that came to, that we used to build this building, says you have to serve people over 60. 
this building must be used to serve people over 60. Um, and if it, if it is used for other things, like renting to other groups, seniors should be prioritized. Um, and if we make a certain amount of money serving other populations, we have to give anything over that back to the city to be used for community block grant funding to help other low income or people at risk. So um, there are th things that are mandated about the way we use the building. It doesn't mean we can't help other people. It just means that we have to primarily focus on people who are over 60. Because that was the purpose of the funding, which right? totally makes sense. And they I don't want say. people cheating and building a community center and using senior services money. That's they they are trying to prioritize a group of people to be served, and so they want us to do the same. I feel like I, I'm I'm hearing you talk about basically a lot of headaches right. figuring out yeah. all of that which awesome <laughs> like uh -huh. you're doing that it sounds like it's, it's a lot but in terms of the bylaws can we not just simply create language that will satisfy um, what we need to have in a bylaw for it to be more or less accurate without getting into these nitty-gritty things that I know are going to cause you lots of headaches well yeah I just don't know if we can say we have some programs that serve so it's not, it's actually not just the bylaws in there, it's, it's also the um, administrative code for the city, and it does say the same thing in that. So it would ha I think it will have to go to city council. Um, so saying that we primarily serve 60 and up is not enough, is what you're saying? Right, it may, it may be that not only does the language have to change, but we have to enforce. Um, and so, and then for that, I just want to ask, um, the, in terms of the enforcement, um, I can see that you're trying really hard to be very clear and conscientious about this. Um, but I'm also wondering, are these funders like breathing down your neck and saying you're out of alignment here? You're, right. you're that's my question too. Like, are you getting dinged by people saying that this needs to change because we don't like what you're what you're doing, or is it just you're being very conscientious? Well, I just sort of stumbled on some problems that okay. that could bite us I mean, later. Like the yeah, so I'm trying to sure. I'm trying to but do due diligence to I make sure that. that I because I'm responsible. Right. So um, you know I'm I'm new on the block and I'm doing I'm just trying to get my ducks in a row. Right. And um, you know Linda did the same thing when she was here. Um, in terms of the rentals, she looked into the community block grant funding and made sure that renting the building was okay to do. Um, and I think that, you know, it's important to talk to the people who might come back and say, you're not using this the way you said you would. Um, uh, but you are allowed a certain amount to, to do. You just, have, you just have, it has to be primarily. So. Uh -huh. Primarily 60. Well, obviously, I'm not the only building in the state who's got block grant money that funded right. it. And obviously, MCOA can help, but I would say whatever the best, easiest language to say, from what you're saying, Kathy, and then we just do it and figure out what the impact, where it needs to be changed. There's no concern that the city council's not going to change it, change what needs to be changed to avoid anyone coming, knocking at the door and say, give me some money back. Yeah, I think, yeah. I mean, I think, and so we we could do that. We could, you could vote to accept the bylaws with that one change would be an amendment. But I think we actually would have to post it again with that yeah. change. And, I, and, and whatever whatever you can find out how others have dealt with this, the same situation in whatever language that we are with the pack, and then just to make it easy and go about our business. Okay, so I can find out more and then. Um, bring that back to the next meeting and then we you could decide whether we're going to change that and then we would need to post it again so that the public can chime in if needed um, if people have you know just that's open meeting law 
that's the way we have to do it. So um, there's not really a rush. So you can table this for the agenda. Yeah, so we, t so we can table that for now. Okay, so elder vision report. <coughs> Uh, not too much. We're now changed our meetings from uh, once a month to once every other month. Uh, we haven't had that much action going on, so once every other month seems to fit better. Uh, Marie has asked for some funding, or had asked for some funding for one thing before, and I haven't got back to them about the women yet on this. And she wants to change that funding. So, because you, you want to change the funding from, I'm not sure, the previous. So I had originally asked for some funding to pay for a celebration for the pilot launch for the extended hours, and mm -hmm. then um, I wanted to, since we're we're not really doing we're not doing a big event to to launch that because we've already launched it. Um, I was hoping to reserve those funds for um, use for the trip program on the van to pay for people who apply for a scholarship to pay for their meal so that they if they are low income that they because we can't we can't pay for food for them so yep. that that would be a scholarship fund yep. for people to, to apply to so the money you're getting from the city uh, to help people with the classes that is going to be separate from the food so what you're talking about what it would just be yeah it would yep. be another it would be another uh, revenue stream yeah. to help support something that that um, and one we can't get from the city, right? So the the wellness grants that city council actually approved mm -hmm. my request for a scholarship fund, which currently is small enough that I felt like we need to limit it to specific programming, and then as we grow that fund, we will okay. we will branch out on what it can be used for. But um, elder vision, um, it seemed like a good use of funding from elder vision. Is there a time limit on this? Do you need an answer? How soon? Would next month be okay? Yes. Okay. Yes. We will have a meeting in November and go over it. But I'll make sure if I understand what's going on. Okay. And I've got your email, so I'm going to spread that around so they'll understand what we're looking for. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. 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 Other than that, uh, television is doing well. Trips and travel is doing very nicely. Putting uh, a lot of money in, a lot of money out. But eventually, trips and travel, we, just, we don't quite break even. Uh, Francine and the group managed to have a little extra from time to time on various trips. So we have a little extra money in there that you can use for other things. So it's doing very well. Any questions? Yes? Can I piggyback on? May I piggyback on? Uh, at the last meeting, so I'm glad I didn't miss the meeting today. So it's next month. Oh, yes. Okay. So um, I remember we talked about that. Uh, the Elder Vision Group is going to look into um, the possibility of helping with growing that fund mm -hmm. that you were speaking mm -hmm. of, the wellness, yep. um, for the scholarships. Right, and, and financially. And financially and possibly having a role in that, and that some of the concerns I, that were shared was that, oh, we don't want to, people are concerned about having to do it all, you know, by themselves, and, and so we're looking at, you know, how to, bring in the, the board and other volunteers uh, to support Elder Vision in helping to grow that fund. Did yeah. I say that accurately? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I think so. Yeah, so I, I know that um, that's being uh, looked into. And I know we'll talk about it, probably talk about it more in- Oh, next month, please. And next yeah. month, yeah. Right, right. Yeah, yeah I, I'm hoping that um, we can that some fundraising can happen. That's what we're talking about. <laughs> yeah, and then there was a little bit of resistance on the part of some of the members of Elder Vision, um, just maybe that they were taking on too much in other areas already and uh, didn't see themselves as fundraiser, fundraising sort of people. And, and so um, we're looking at, well, how to still make it uh, feasible and still make it work and not having those people feel that um, they have to take on something that they're not maybe feeling up to doing or capable of or what have you. You know, finding a way to still, having a win-win. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and the staff, we don't, the staff doesn't really, 
we don't have the capacity to be running fundraisers and, and also it's, it's not really appropriate for the staff to be sort of like the PTO running, um, the teachers running fundraisers to put money in the PTO. <laughs> it kind of, it, it sort of doesn't make sense that friends group raises money for, for causes and so um, if there, it would be great if there were people who would join the Elder Vision who are gung-ho for fundraising because I think that there's on, on one energy. hand, uh, the uh, staff has done fundraising here. Right, but we're not but supposed they, to. Uh, but they've done it for the elder. And they haven't only twice have given money to the elder. The rest of it all went into the senior civic services, which would be appropriate. I would right. Say. Yeah, I mean, we, um, we um, don't really have the capacity to be running a lot of fundraisers because we're stretched staffing-wise. Um, and so um, I just think that if if there are people who have the energy and are, you know, interested in joining Elder Vision, that would be helpful. Because Joanne actually came and pitched an idea about organizing a golf tournament as a fundraiser, um, but it would mean that there needed to be more people involved in helping organize that. And, and I can't just put all my staff on that because we're busy trying to meet our mission of the senior center. So. Something else came up at that meeting that we didn't bring up at the, we were going to mention at last month's uh, board meeting, but we didn't, in that a few of us have been talking about the merits of there being maybe an article in the Chronicle or, or, or even in the Gazette as well about that. I know it's been announced about the Wellness Fund, but asking people to feel free, the public to contribute feel to free the to give money. To the wellness, but well, well, in fundraising, you've got to do the ask, yes. And that's if you don't want, and that's part of the ask is letting people know that, in fact, someone in our group said that um, they had heard of people leaving to the senior center or, or to the friends group mm -hmm. in their from their estate, you know, in plan right. giving or, or maybe donating a car, you know, that everyone does it and PR everyone you know they do the thing where the people don't and so but we decided that we need to uh, raise awareness about that opportunity for right. people to do it to hear yeah and so that campaign. Was, and yeah. so that's really what um, something that can be done right away without an actual fundraising event is to increase awareness through an article right in the Gazette and and in the Chronicle so that's that, that's what, happening we yeah, forgot. Yeah. Well, asking for the yeah, ticket. it's going in. Yes, Woo! It's going in. Thank you. <laughs> can I ask for the next meeting if we could have an, a broad overview of finances? I don't think everyone even knows what Elder Vision is and its relationship and sort of where the money comes from, just to better understand mm -hmm. the need for fundraising, that, et cetera. Just yeah, I think there's picture. like twenty-four thousand right now, and it. You know, that. Okay. Not just Elder Vision, but where the other pockets of money, you mentioned right. grant sources that we do not want. You mean the senior center? The entire the budget, budget. Okay. financial picture so to understand, to sort of get the big picture, sure. what you can spend money for, when it's important to go through Elder Vision, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> right. Yeah, I mean, Elder Vision. Right. You know, yeah, that, and what we spend the money to have, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the Friends Group is. Um, often a friends group is often used to to we use and we use it this way too to cover things that we're not allowed to spend money on right. as a municipality so but the concern was that we would need help from the rest of the board or from other members on the board that the friend the uh, elder vision did group did say we're not doing this alone so that's something that um the group asked me to share with the rest of you and I think that happened with the board in the past, but it was the staff, really, that was devising these fundraisers, and then they were coming to the board and asking us to help. So now it's like Elder Vision needs to devise what the fundraising is going to be and come to us, and a lot of us will, would volunteer right. to, to That's do that. That's what I was referring but to. A lot of those dinners and parties and everything, that money was going into Elder Vision. Is, isn't that correct? Like, yes. like the gala that they had, the money the, went to the Elder gala Vision. And but the, it was run by staff yeah. here. But so that's, that's, that's the only not two that went in there. No. Uh, right. Uh, otherwise, but, it, uh, uh, most of the other, uh, like the uh, tag sales, uh, dinners that they charge for, all went to Secret Services. Most nonprofit boards, as many of you know, are involved in some degree to fundraising. 
with fundraising. It's, and so if any of you uh, enjoy it or want to be part of it, please, we welcome your input to, yeah, thank to um, the Elder Vision group. Okay, I think we should move on to new business. Yeah, it looks like Kim. I'll take group. that perfect segue. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for setting me up on talking about volunteers. That was great. Um, just to, to talk a little bit about volunteer recruitment, um, over the past couple months, we have recruited seven new volunteers that are varying, that are, are helping in various ways, uh, everywhere from the coffee shop to reception to doing some translation to uh, to helping Michelle with social service initiatives, um, you name it, we've got a great group of people um, that are, are assisting in many ways. We also have kind of reactivated, is the word I'll use, an additional eight volunteers that had been inactive and they're helping out with the bistro and various food initiatives that we have, whether it's baking in the kitchen or serving uh, the wonderful meals that we're serving on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And there's an additional two uh, volunteers that I'm working with to kind of find out where they're gonna fit in the picture. Um, so we've got some new volunteers on board, which we're thrilled about, but as this discussion leading up to um, my, my short uh, monologue here is, is that we do need more volunteers. So whether it's assisting Elder Vision and fundraising, uh, we are, are looking for volunteers for reception, uh, for the coffee shop, you name it. What, I, I'm Dispatch. not going to say no. Dispatch, uh, drivers, help with trips. Um, essentially, if somebody's willing to give their time and their talents, we'll have a discussion about what their time and their talents is and we'll match it with a need here. So uh, we have been advertising um, some of our needs, both in the Chronicle as well as some of the email blasts that are going out on a weekly basis. Uh, but that's going to be an ongoing discussion. So if you know someone, uh, mm -hmm. if there's some way you'd like to participate, please let me know on the point of contact. And I'm meeting with anyone, anyone that has those interests to find a good match uh, with, again, the skill set somebody has, as well as the time they have to volunteer with our needs here. Thank you for orchestrating all that. Mm -hmm. And um, I know you probably are in touch with or Pat Sicard yes. from RSVP, mm -hmm. and uh, you can bug her weekly. <laughs> I used to work with her. <laughs> She'll, so it, it's well. really, mm -hmm. it, it, they're another great resource to without match a doubt, people. Without a doubt, and some, of those, some of those new volunteers that I've mentioned have come through Pat and RSVP, yeah. uh, so that's certainly a, a relationship that we highly value and will continue to, yeah. to utilize as we move forward. Because so, they'll yes. put the actual uh, request in their newsletter Mm -hmm. And they send out email blasts as with the list with requests right. also. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As you maybe I'm not telling you anything no, new, but we, we know. And Pat is yeah, Pat's yeah. hard working hard yeah. to help you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But that's another thing that I I hope you all won't be upset with me for saying it, but other nonprofit boards, if you need volunteers, you could I want to invite you to give us the list of what your needs. Many of us are involved with churches or synagogues or other organizations or we know people who are, you know, might want a volunteer role, we could give them it as ambassadors. Marie always talks about us all being ambassadors. Mm -hmm. And so for us to not be afraid, we don't have to be so shy, you know, to say to a friend, oh, you were talking about wanting to do some volunteer work. Well, I'm on the board, and, uh, you know, and call yeah. Kim. And so I know that's what you're advocating sure. for, but I'm wondering if, are you willing to send us an email of yeah, what the sure. positions are that you're... Sure. Sure, I can do Me that. And, and one of the things that I also do want to be careful with in that is I'll send you opportunities, but I also don't want to just limit it to that either. Right. Um, you know, we yeah. do have people that come forward. Uh, there's a gentleman I talked to that, you know, really we went round and round with various opportunities and, and all of a sudden he plugged into something that I wouldn't even have thought to put on that right. list. So, so we want to also make sure that that, you know, that I'll certainly provide a list, but if somebody's got time and, got and has passion or interest in something, um, that passion or interest may start, may connect with somebody here. And it might mean leading a group, it might mean painting, it might mean helping right. out right. With, right. Uh, with my senior center, could be a lot of different yeah. things, but sure, I can do that. Well, then listen, then that. you can put and whatever your talents mm -hmm. and passions are. Oh, I'd be happy to get yeah. Sure, sure. Thanks. Sure. So um, in terms of, of training, the next steps for training, uh, we have instituted a monthly uh, reception meeting, uh, and that's being being held once a month for all receptionists to attend, all reception volunteers invited to attend, where we are reviewing what's coming up in the months ahead, uh, really reviewing communication, making sure that they have all the information they need uh, at their fingertips uh, as they're answering questions at the reception desk. 
I'm in the process of and, and working through revising the volunteer manual, um, as well as the components of training. Cynthia, I will be reaching out to you very quickly because I'm about at the point where I'm able to do that, where we can expand that conversation and get that finished. Um, the training, in addition to, a lot of the training at this point is focused on reception, and it's focused on reception because reception really, they're ambassadors. They're ambassadors of the building. They're the first people that uh, anyone sees as they come in. Um, we've had some great dialogue in some of our reception meetings about what's customer service and what's hospitality, what's the difference between the two. Um, and, and we really are focusing on what's the experience of somebody visiting here from the minute they pull into the parking lot to the minute they're back and, you know, back and leaving the parking lot, no matter how they got to the parking lot. Um, so one of the things that we, we know is the receptionists are ambassadors, they set the tone. They set the tone. If there's a smile at the front desk, there's a smile on the other side of the desk. <laughs> if there's a frown at the front desk, there's a frown on the other side of the desk. And I think that that goes for not only reception volunteers, but staff too. Everybody, everybody, top to bottom. Um, and so a lot of what we'll be working on with the trainings is not only kind of the nuts and bolts, like how do you enter a new person into my senior center, but also those customer service components as well um, to make sure that we are all ambassadors of what we do here, about the very important work that we do here. Um, so the training will not only include some, some customer service, hospitality components, uh, but also, um, you know, again, how to enter things in my senior center, um, conflict of interest, confidentiality, some of those other notes and bolts that all receptionists need to, all, all volunteers need to know, and then we'll uh, expand that to the, to the additional volunteers as well. Are you getting a good turnout at the monthly meetings? Decent, decent. I would like to see some, some more turnout in all honesty. Uh, we're doing it at noon and varying the days of the week that it is held on knowing that one day a week may not always be good for, for people. So we're varying it and also hoping that given this, the times that people are in volunteering, that 12's right in the middle. So we at least catch the four people that are volunteering that day, <laughs> plus who else can make it. Um, so it's, it's, been, it's been decent. I'd love to see a few more, uh, but it's been decent. It's been a decent turnout and we'll continue to do those. Um, Michelle will be presenting at the next one on some of the things that she updated you on today so that we have the receptionist up to date on all of that as well. Cool. Um, any questions with volunteer recruitment, training, orientation? All right. uh, a short update on the next two then, the Arts and Culture Committee as well as the Policy Review Committee. Committee, We're getting those off the ground as well. I have three people. Uh, that are going to be assist assisting with really the policy and procedures. Again, we're going to start at reception, uh, really go through the information that's there, how we communicate with one another, how we make them aware of everything that's going on in the building. Because I tell you what, if you've not looked at the October calendar, <laughs> there's a lot more new on there, especially with the expanded hours. And so that communication is really going to be continue to be critical. Uh, so we're going to look at that process and procedure. So we have three people lined up, and we'll get that off the ground next week. Uh, in terms of the arts and culture uh, focus group, I do have one person at this point committed to that as well, and we'll continue to recruit for that, and we'll hope to have that up off the, the ground off the after the next couple weeks as well. Right, and so people from this board who, who have specific interest in being involved in those committees, please do let me know. Yeah. Remind us what arts and culture committees about. Really about the programming, about the programming, what what we are already doing, as well as where can we expand um, ideas, um, how do we make things accessible, and really soup to nuts in right. terms picking of what's out, going on. And picking out the movies for the year. Yes. Picking out, yes. you know, kind of we really want the ideas to come from the people who who are tuned in to what people sure. like to do in the valley. Um, You told me before I forgot, but what are the committees? So there's like a programming committee and there's a bylaws committee. Is that are these all committees that are part of the board? Well, the the policy committee, I think that um, that Kim's creating another committee, I think, which is the probably focus the group is a better. Yeah, so that's, better that's more, those this sort of policy review committee, committee was actually a group of the board. Um, and so I think that the, the policy committee that she's creating is around a specific thing on the front desk. Um, and that, that's separate, so maybe should have a different name. But this policy 
review committee that was looking at the bylaws and the code of conduct was was staff and board members. So that was called the policy committee. Yeah. Um, just, just so I could like, because they're just, this is like a whole, there's a whole bunch of things that I don't really have context for. I think really what you're talking about, Kim, is procedures. More procedures. It's more reception procedures, and uh -huh. policy is gonna come from just a different like, Yeah, it, yeah. I, I would say yeah. Just just to clarify, it, yeah. it is more of a, a procedure focus group for the for reception primarily at the moment. Um, critical to have people that are currently volunteering in that role giving feedback on the daily operation, <laughs> and that's really the, the focus on that is where uh, communication being a part of it, how we communicate, how we organize information so it's at their fingertips. Um, Phone calls, again, looking at the customer service components all the time. So it's really focused on, it's really a focus group on the policy. On the and do you want to open that up to the board, or do you Sorry? just want volunteers on that? That, uh, Cynthia, I don't know if that's one that makes sense for you to be a part of with volunteers specifically. Um, that might be. Um, more, I think the programming one, the arts and culture one, would be more, uh, more where I would hope to have some assistance from the board, um, certainly, but we, and we can talk okay. some day where, where It just can't be more than half of the board, and then, yeah. and then it becomes an official open meeting law. Um, it's, mm -hmm. it's, we have to then post minutes, so you can't all come. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Linda found that out when she first came here. She invited all the board to a picnic at Cooler Park. Right. Unfortunately, uh -huh. less than half of them showed up, <laughs> and then she found out, I can do that. <laughs> so. Okay, so can we go over the onto the director's report? Sure. Um, you may all have noticed the the chronicle is starting to change, and we're we're getting a lot more um, programming in place, but we're also doing a lot more PR um, and just trying to get the word out. And it's really making a difference. People are um, noticing and coming to more things. Um, and in changing the format of the Chronicle, I think that it's becoming a little easier user-friendly, I guess. It's just a little simpler um, so that people can just see things within categories um, rather than um, you know, sort of having to read a lot of information. And I, I do think we need to maybe put a little bit more information back in um, because then you know, there's some pieces missing that are important pieces. So, um, and like I said earlier, the, the financial aid fund was um, approved by city council, just starting at 3,600 per year. I really want to see that grow. I want to fundraise for that. Um, and so, because uh, I, what I would really like is that we're, right now it's limited to wellness. It's a wellness grant, so it can be used for a fitness membership or fitness classes or a clinic um, or a farm share. But if somebody wants to go to a, an art class that's 10 bucks and they can't afford to, they wouldn't be able to use that fund for that yet. So if we grow that fund, then people will be able to use it for more things and more people can qualify. So right now it's based on SNAP income guidelines. But I would like it to be that people who just miss the SNAP income guidelines but are still struggling to to live on a fixed income and maybe um, don't have money for the extra things that give a lot of quality to one's life, like taking an art class, um, that there's room for that because um, you know people people have to make choices and sometimes they're choosing between a medication or a dinner out. And what we're trying to do is really support people's quality of life. So. Um, I am putting it in the Chronicle this month, starting every month it will go in a, um, it, because there's no reason why we can't do this, we did this in the Hilltowns, put in a solicitation for the gift fund. You get little bits of money, sometimes you get bigger bits of money, but like people see that and they think, oh, I'll send five bucks. And that every little bit adds up and goes to the gift fund and then can be used to help people who want to access things. So um, we will do the annual appeal um, as usual. And um, I'm working on, 
the capital improvement request to do some upgrades because this building's 11 years old and hasn't you know, it needs fresh paint, it needs a you know, new carpeting. I don't know if people noticed, but the carpeting got cleaned this weekend. Nobody really remembers how long ago it was cleaned last, oh. but <laughs> maybe four years ago, we think. Um, so like real, a real thorough cleaning. Um, but uh, you know, there's some upgrades that need to happen. So um, improvements over a five year span will hopefully be approved. Um, and you know we can kind of spiff up a bit. Um, there was a large donation, the annual donation that Cedar Chess makes, um, and I think they valued that at around thirty thousand. And that can be used for a fundraiser. So um, another thing we would need volunteers to help with to create a fundraiser around the use of those um, gifts. So. And uh, do we go to practice? Yeah. No, no, we're not including it in the craft fair because what happens is that people gravitate towards those items and the artists and the crafters actually get less sales. So we're going to focus on um, making sure that people who participate in the arts and crafts fair actually, I, I know a lot of people who do this and they sometimes they don't even make the money back that they spent to purchase a table. and so. I think that we can use all of that donation from Cedar Chest in a in a better way to actually bring in money, um, and we won't be competing with people we're trying to draw into for another kind of uh, revenue stream because those rentals of tables actually create some income. So um, I'm working on the annual report for the Executive Office of Elder Affairs. Um, and I actually asked for an extension because I want to make sure that our statistics are ship shape, um, and um, they usually they usually aren't. Usually, when you print out the stats, there are holes, and you say, "Can't this can't be right? There's got to be some information missing." So then we track that stuff down. Um, um, I. I'm not sure if I'm going to be submitting a cultural arts grant, but um, I think it's due on Monday, and I had been collaborating you know, on some ideas, um, but um, we'll see what happens with that. But um, in terms of that discussion was more around sort of the Arts Night Out. Um, we've become a site for Arts Night Out. We have not yet uh, secured sort of a, a grand opening you know, a big, a, a big uh, showstopper for the for the first one, which I'd really like to do. But really, getting the public in here and seeing the senior center, probably a lot of people for the first time might be coming here um, and not really knowing what has been going on here. Maybe um, you know, more people might venture in and come to programs here if they find out how cool we actually are. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but I, I'm excited about bringing in more arts um, and having some things going on here that that really um, integrate us into this, the art scene in Northampton and showcase um, art, you know, of, of seniors, but also just art in general, like bringing art here that maybe um, seniors will see that they might not get to see otherwise, or performances, or, um, but we have this base so we, we really should um, make it available I think for some of these things that are happening in downtown and so the um, the downtown Northampton Association and um, the, the culture arts um, all the kinds of groups that are involved in, in the arts downtown um, are really excited about that too about the senior center becoming part of that um, and one of the first collaborations with the downtown North so down, downtown Northampton Association, I guess everyone calls it the DNA, um, um, is to that we're going to be part of the trick or treat. The business district does trick or treat, and we're going to have a trunk or treat. So um, if you want to bring your car down and decorate your trunk um, out in the parking lot, there'll be an intergenerational thing going on. Um, where where kids can come down here and trick or treat, um, so it's you know it's one way to just kind of open up 
the arena of getting people down here and seeing what we're about. And, um, I didn't even know that a trunk or treat existed. Jen Carberry was the one who told me about it. So. <laughs> but if you look it up, it's pretty. It's pretty funny. Like people really go all out and decorate their haunt, make a haunted trunk <laughs> in your car. I don't have to go to the newspaper photos of that. Yeah, I, I hope so. Because kids don't come to your house anymore. I don't know about you guys, but they don't come to my neighborhood. I haven't seen one of these. Yeah, my car here. And they go to the uh, certain neighborhoods get blasted. I think. Right. Well, and they were saying they go to the Rag Shag Parade. Um, so they don't want to compete with that, but they do the three to five, the trick or treat downtown. Um, so. Um, and the the expansion is going really well. There were um, Tuesday night there were 17 people here for meditation, and there were 10 people here for ukulele. There's African uh, uh, Middle Eastern drumming tonight. Joe Blumenthal is doing ukulele and the drumming, and um, and on Saturday I came in and there was there were quite a few people actually waiting for the door to open to the fitness center at 7:30 in the morning. Wow. Um, so. Um, you know, people are excited about the expanded hours. Um, so I'm really wanting to get the word out about that, and um, it's going to take a little while, I think, um, especially as it gets darker. But I, I do think there's a need and an interest. So, um, so spread the word, please, because because you are the people that know other people who maybe it's not even on their radar, especially if people if people have just always known that it didn't fit in their schedule, and now it does, they may not even look at the chronicle. It might be chronicle. It might come in the mail and go right in the recycling. So, um, um, so I think that's. Oh, and 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 yeah, the the furniture moving around. So things have been moved around quite a bit. Um, I've been, you know, hoping that we're going to get new furnishings at some point um, but also um, just sort of clearing out clutter and um, cutting back on all the places that we're putting up flyers and trying to disseminate information that it seems like the more you put up the less people read um, so kind of trying to hone in on um, a way to get information to people in a, in a clearer way and a more organized way um, and also um, making some more spaces for sort of intimate gatherings where people can sit in as a group and um, just sort of have impromptu kind of um, gatherings and so um, and and offering tables in in the lobby when we have this giant space and it you know it doesn't get used very much so um, I think people piece a lot of people are, are coming up to me and saying they like the like the changes and um, you know, sometimes change is hard, um, but you know, I, I think we we do need to kind of change some of the way that things have looked around here because the demographic is changing. And people are looking for um, you know, sort of I think a different environment in a lot of ways um, than it has been, and, and that just goes with the territory. I think all COAs are are kind of trying to shift and. Um, provide more for the boomers and you know I I wasn't surprised that that many people were meditating and playing ukulele but um, I think I think that the meditation teacher was very surprised because during the day he was doing it and he only like three three or four people I think and and um, he was thrilled that that many people would come out on a Tuesday night so sometimes it is just um, and, and it's been really nice to see the bistro doing so well because um, we, we had been planning for 30 and we had 67 people come last Thursday. So um, it's very popular and the food is good. If you haven't tried it, you should come and try it. Um, and um, the cooking classes are going to start and I, you know, we're just going to keep building on that. Um, weekly movies and so um, I think there was karaoke oh, yeah. Tuesday mm -hmm. wow. yeah with mocktails and salty snacks good. yeah so anyway, um, 
I think that's everything I have for now. Uh, Marie, are you planning to expand the bistro hours uh, from two days to anything else? I've been asked that a lot. Oh, so we put out a survey just this week mm -hmm. that asked a lot of questions yes. about about the bistro and they, how people feel about the pricing, which was all positive. Um, the pricing, the offering being twice a week, it was sort of mixed. Some people wanted it more and some people wouldn't come more. Um, mm -hmm. But that, you know, I think we time will tell. We're not going to jump into that right away, but um, it does it does offer a way to come together that I think is really is really helping to create this warm community environment here. And I think that people are enjoying that. So it will you know we'll continue to survey and get feedback from people, um, but I think in terms of the fiscal part of it, there's no reason why we couldn't do it daily. So I can, I, if anybody asks me, I can tell them that it's, it's being looked at and possibly in the works. Yeah, and we, we're also, um, Kevin will be away for a couple weeks, but, um, and we will still be serving the meals. We're not going to be serving meals on election day. We're not going to have programming going on on election day. Um, we're going to focus on um, staff trainings and things like that. So, um, but we will have transportation so people can come to the election. So. Um, but we're going to be adding product to the coffee shop, and there's already a lot more product in there, and it's selling really well, fresh baked goods. But we'll add more product, and people did say in the survey that they were they would purchase soup and bread in there mm -hmm. if they missed lunch or on a day we're not serving lunch. So I think we just want to provide more opportunity for um, healthy, low-priced, um, easily accessible food. So. Kathy, you? Yeah, um, so I, I appreciate that Mr. Uh, Marin came in and visited with, with us and, and shared some of his um, ideas and gave us some positive feedback and some concerns um, for us. And one of the things he said that's sort of lingering a bit in my mind is um, that it was sort of, I think he, was in, in, uh, he felt that the uh, senior center um, was not as multicultural um, mm, yeah. serving as, as he would like to see. And I know it's anecdotal, um, but I appreciate that some things sort of do register anecdotally. But I'm more of a data kind of person, so I, and I'm just wondering whether Marie, you have an opportunity um, with your ELEA reports or any other things that you do. Are those sort of demographics being tracked in some way? Yeah, and, 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 yeah. and do we have a way of seeing if we are reflecting the demographics of our county? Mm -hmm. I think we, we are in, you know, maybe we could do a lot better, um, but. Are the numbers sort of? I, I have to run a report yeah. to know for sure, and um, but I, but that is something that's being worked on as well. And so um, we are partnered with Northampton Neighbors. We are um, part of the grant that they're working on through the Community Foundation um, that's specifically targeted to to get more diversity in terms of people joining Northampton Neighbors. And so we're partnering around making uh, it, our facility more welcoming to people of different cultures because um, it, we, we definitely aren't. But I think that it's going to take a little while. They're doing social circles out in the community, and we are going to be giving them information to give to people so that they know what's offered here, but we're also going to be trying to partner around having conversations with those groups about what they would like to see here and how we can engage them in creating that here. And so I have been talking to Kevin specifically around creating some things around food, like yeah. bringing yeah. people in yeah. to teach a class or to, you know, finding ways for them to kind of have a role in creating programming Absolutely. rather than just saying will you please come right. um, yeah. you know I think yeah, I, mean, I think you're, you're, you're doing a great job with the mission and, and, and with the program and really striving it's for, gonna take for, a little while for yeah what we do to reflect values and so on I was just wondering if if we have any data to show whether I can definitely bring that yeah is here or, or that we're really way out of whack or are we 
I are think we actually more on yeah. board than we think we might be? I don't know. So, but I know it's yeah. hard sometimes to find that data, so I didn't know if, if well, you I, ha are tracking those sorts of. Uh, I think it's getting entered. Yeah, when people things. become members, but um, you know, I don't, I don't think, and I have heard that people, people of color. Um, Latino people especially come here and there's no one here who looks like them or speaks like them and so they don't feel like this is their place. They don't feel like um, there is a social group to connect to here. And so Casa Latina and Savo House, like I think there's been a real divide culturally um, and socioeconomically that we are really looking at um, and that's Part of why I wanted to create a financial aid fund and I wanted to make sure that we're offering programming not just programming that's fee-based um, but offering programming that meets needs and interests um, and is accessible and and my goal is to have um, a system where you don't have to self-identify over and over again that you you just like you at the, like at the Y you apply your fee is set, it come, you know, it's, you don't talk about it every time you try to go to something. It's, it's, it's just, you go in, you pay what you can, and I, I think we could get there. Um, so, that's, that's kind of my goal. Thank you. Michael? Quick things. As I was waiting for this meeting, a member of the senior center, Sally Weiss, came up to me, and she had a question. The question is about the possibility of the senior center to collaborate with Forbes Library, which has a program sort of community read. There's a book that's out. That's yeah, we're already doing, doing it. Doing that. Yeah, we are. It's out there. There's a stack of books. But the Lisa, issue is that we all didn't know that. Yeah, for and one Lisa reason or another. Lisa Nowdy didn't know it, and she's the director. She, she she brought the books. Well, she brought the books, but what I'm talking about is not just having books here, but what they are interested in is a, a collaboration where there might be discussions here, there might be a film, oh, okay. something further. Oh, so the book. I'll leave that with yeah. you. You can tell me who should. Well, I, ha I have been having meetings with Forbes Library. Good. Yeah. The second thing is Laura Vickis, who's a Northampton native, um, and now works in Tucson for the University of Arizona Aging Center and has had all kinds of specialized training. We'd be really interested, because this is her hometown, in collaborating with this center to share information and connections and I don't know who to connect her to to foster that. Is it you? I can send you her info and all kinds of things. Yes, please do. I will do it. And, and um, you can direct people to the Arts and Culture Committee, too, because that's where the work's going to happen. We this need people to join it. More than that, this is someone who's a specialist, who's done advanced work in dementia issues, yeah. and has a master's in public health. And, uh, what is she yeah, I'd like to be uh, in touch. She's just interested in seeing well. in touch and seeing what she could bring to the Northampton Senior Center, because this is her home. Right. Well, so we're doing the age-friendly initiative, and yeah. we will be wanting to engage other people in the working groups. But I'll this, send her stuff to you. Yeah. Great. She's not coming here. She's in Tucson. Be remote. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. okay. Can I just say one thing? I'd remiss if I gave a report on volunteers without thanking you all as well. So Aww. thank you for all the time that you give as well as every volunteer and, and the critical role that they play here at the Senior Center. So thank you. Thank you. All right, I'll entertain Bob. You know what? Yeah, uh, motion to adjourn. <laughs> Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <laughs>